Hello everyone and welcome to the seventh episode of Things You May Have Missed in The Witcher 3. We've already covered White Orchard, Velen, Novigrad and our two lovely sorceresses, so the time has come to focus our attention on Skellige. It's huge, it's full of content and beautiful vistas and amazing music and it's just a great zone to explore. Now, I must admit that I thought about various ways to split this video in two parts, but somehow I was never satisfied with the result, so I ultimately decided to put all the details in one place. And without further delay, let's get right into the 20 things you may have missed in Skellige. Starting off with something fairly small, yet one that I did not find out until my third or so playthrough, and I'm actually standing on it right now. It's the Kertrolda elevator that goes from the village by the shore, where King Bran's funeral takes place, all the way up to the bridge on which Yennefer and Berna Bran are having a chat. The journey does take a while, but I suppose it's still faster than running up there or going on horseback. The mechanism can also be a little tricky, so be careful not to miss the elevator, because you'll waste a good amount of time. And finally, a funny piece of dialogue can be heard once you get up there. Did you hear the lift Adventure got stuck seeker. yesterday? Killed hung there half a day before they got him down. I've always said only a fool would hang himself in midair in a wooden box. But sail in the sea in a wooden box, that's wise. You fall off a ship, you can always swim. Fall off the lift, all that's left is the funeral. Okay, that's it for number one. And as I mentioned, Berna Bran, the Queen Mother. Let's move on to thing number two. Northeast of Arimbjorn, in this location over here, not far from the shore and swarming with sirens, you can find none other than Berna Bran herself, tied up to a rock and left for dead. This, of course, happens if you side with Ceres, and together with her, you expose the Queen Mother. Geralt has a brief comment. Berna Bran. Horrific death. And he's clearly right, as you can even see her blood-stained wrists as she tried to free herself. That's it about Berna, and before I proceed, I'd like to ask you something. Which do you think is the best ending for Skellige, and why? And by ending, I mean which ruler do you prefer? Okay, while I was on the topic of people chained to rocks to await their death, have you ever met this guy? B but I didn't want his death! Free me, please. I was framed for murder. He's right over here. Name is Jorg, and he was chained here for the murder of his uncle Greta. Later, or earlier, I suppose, depending on what order you did things in, you can find out that it was his sister who's behind it all. The little girl hated her uncle and thought he stank, so one day she told her brother that Uncle Greta did bad things to her, and in a fit of rage, he killed their uncle. Ah, shame about Greta. He was a good man. Aye, and he didn't drink much. The name of the quest is also a reference to the famous novel by Dostoevsky. Right, off we go to number four. I'm sure all of you remember Stangrim, the guy who badmouths Yennefer. There are actually a couple of things you may have missed about him. Normally, you either choose to slap him or just part ways with him. What's your name? Stangrim. Well, Stangrim, I don't like you. In fact, I feel like slapping you. Go ahead, Drifter. You try. But did you know that if you went for the slapping, and you decide to pull out your sword in the middle of the fist fight, he will actually sick his dog on you. Over! Get him, boy! Not only that, but you will also be forced to kill him. Maybe he deserved a bit of slapping, but in my mind, I'd say that's too much. Anyway, the second part about him is fairly small, but provided he survived your encounter, you can see him going back to Kertrolda, and you can even meet him there by the docks. Got to go to the port. Bid see you're settling in like a ship's run aground. Wanted to look around. I'd like to know where I've landed. Go in peace. And speaking of Stangrim, let's go back to the crashed ship for a moment. This is something I found on my very first playthrough, and I thought about not putting it in this video because it's probably too obvious, but let's give it an honorable mention, as someone is knocking on something outside, I hope you can't hear it. So, the thing you may have missed number, what was it, 5? Is the fact that behind the wreckage over here, you can find and loot the corpse of the captain 
from whom you can recover the 1000 crowns you spent to travel here in the first place. That was it, let's move on to number 6. So exploring this area over here, you will stumble upon a guy who's about to be murdered. Bastard! Asshole! Cockeyed prick! You're dead! What was that about? If you save him, you'll get to hear his story. It appears he is in love with one of the priestesses of Freya. The guy who wanted to murder him I think was her brother. Anyway, the priestesses aren't supposed to marry. He, however, will not give up and wishes to collect logical evidence that pokes holes in religion and show it to the priestesses in an attempt to change their minds. Naturally, he asks Geralt for help with the task and throughout your journeys you can find and buy several books that fit the subject. Once you collect them, he'll appreciate the help but then decides to go out traveling himself to perhaps continue the search or find other ways to be with Irma. Later on, he can actually be seen in Novigrad not far from where Audrin is. There's a brief cutscene with him, but it's unclear where things end up for his love story. Huh. What are you doing here? Ah, Witcher, greetings. I want to sign on a ship. Done looking for a way to be with Irma? Not at all. My search is what brought me to Novigrad. Access to culture, you see. But I also need to earn me bread, hence the ship. I get it. Good luck to you. Thanks. And to you. Well, I should go. So long, Witcher. Alright, time for number 7. While on the topic of Novigrad, um, let us talk about our dear poet, Lambert. You know, he gives you a quest to go to Skellige and kill a guy. Well, not exactly, but that's basically what happens. Now, if you choose to go to Feral before taking the quest from Lambert, though, you'll be able to complete another quest called Flesh for Sale where you get the chance to free a group of slaves. You're mine now, all of you. Now listen and obey. Anyone doesn't gets cut down like a dog, understood? Follow me. You can do so by either playing along, pretending that you're actually in the business, or by just killing everyone. Either way, it's a great way to reward some random, non-linear exploration. And speaking of Lambert and his quest to travel to Skellige, Let's get to thing you may have missed number 8. If you actually accept the quest and sail across the sea, provided that you've already completed the part of the main story where you meet Krach with Yennefer, you can get a unique piece of dialogue with him, and by him I mean Krach, related to Lambert's quest. And for this detail I have to thank a viewer of mine whose name escapes me, um, please post a comment below, whoever you are, if you're watching this. Anyway, here's the brief exchange between Geralt and Krach. I'm looking for a man named Hammond. <laughs> What's so funny? He's the chief pirate of Pharaoh, commander of a mighty fleet and a briar in every clan's ass. Though, Holger's most of all, as he has to deal with him. Still don't get what part of that amuses you. You want something from him, that's clear. But Hammond has no patience for your kind. A few words, and he'll have you thrown in the bear pit. After which, you'll promptly kill him, and my troubles will be over. That is why I laugh. We'll see how it goes. I'm off to Pharaoh. There's a price on Hammond's head. Once you're done, come see me. I'll pay you gladly. It is very unfortunate, however, that Ultimately, you don't get to ask him for that reward he promised. He just doesn't say anything once you've killed Hammond. Right, enough about Lambert already, let's move on to number 9. Fuck, what no? It's a small quest you can find if you explore this location on the map. A husband and wife are hiding inside a cave, but they're not your ordinary couple. It turns out the wife is a monster. Like an actual one? What's going on? Someone hate you? No, 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 quiet. Oh, she'll hear. Who'll hear? Oh, a sweetheart. Fresh and scrumptious. Tell me a rhyme, then you'll get a prize. Or a beating. <sighs> You're as lovely as... As what? As what? As rotten meat. Sadly, Geralt could not muster a compliment here, but we know how he is. 45 seconds. Huh? We've 45 seconds left. Yen, I adore you. Hmm, 
No points for creativity. Anyway, after you deal with her, the bard simply vanishes. And afterwards I could not find him anywhere. It's one of those quests where I can't help but feel like I'm missing something. So perhaps if any of you knows anything further, please share it with us down below. Alright, we are halfway there with Thing You May Have Missed number 10. I've made a video about this a few months ago, but I just could not go on without mentioning it. To my knowledge, this is only available through a console command on PC, and it actually unlocks what seems to be a half-implemented, possibly unfinished sequence of Vivian from Blood and Wine. Apparently, she does visit Skellige after she vows to do so if you meet her in Novigrad. That is, of course, after the ending of Blood and Wine, provided you went with the egg ritual in her personal quest, leaving her with seven more years to live. I'll leave a link down below in the description so you can see a complete walkthrough of me stalking her all around Skellige, if you want to. And now, without further delay, we're moving on to the next thing, which is number 11. Okay, I'm sure you guys remember the Nithing quest, which I've speculated may be a subtle Warcraft easter egg, because there's a group of people there called the Sons of Lothar. But anyway, there are two outcomes for it. You either reflect the curse back to the ex-wife, or girlfriend, I suppose, to save the child, or you force the father to go back to her in order to achieve the same thing. Any chance you know who wore this shawl? Of course. Yona, our herbalist. Oh, she'll be pleased you found it for her. Yeah, real pleased. Now here's what you may have missed here. First, if you go back to the village a couple of days later, if the curse was reflected, Yona will be gone, indicating that most likely she did indeed die a quick death as Geralt wished. J O N N A. May it be quick and painless. And if the man was forced to go back to her, a brief exchange between the two can be heard. Give it a year, two. You'll forget them. I'll bear you sons, strong and healthy ones. You'll see. Well, will you say anything? Leave me be, woman. I agreed to come back to you. Not to love you. Uh-oh. So, there's truth to that blather by the ice giant. Once again, I would love to hear your thoughts on which do you think is the right choice here. Personally, I went with the reflection of the curse, but I have my doubts. Okay, we're done with Lothar, but not quite with his village. There's yet another quest here, and for the second time in this video I owe thanks to another viewer who pointed me to this detail, and his or her name shall not be mentioned once again. You probably wonder why I'm not saying the names of these people like I usually do. Well, to my shame, I must admit I accidentally deleted them while sorting through my notes for this video, so forgive me, if the person is watching, please make yourself known in the comments. Anyway, this wonderful viewer shared a small detail about the Missing Sun contract. It's a fairly short but rather grim quest, not unlike the Son of Lothar, but it turns out that if you pay attention, it gets even more depressing in the very end. As someone started cutting trees outside with a chainsaw... Okay, so here's the thing. After you bring the terrible news to the father about his son, and wait a bit, you'll see him heading off somewhere. It turns out he goes to the edge of the dock, by the shore, and starts crying. In fact, if you wait and meditate, it appears that he'll remain there, doing that forever. I told him, son, nothing good ever came out of Pharaoh. Stay home. Your time will yet come for adventures and glory. What became of those ah. nice pharaoh lads who went treasure hunting in the ruins? I don't know, but I'm afraid we shan't see him ah. again. Oof, why are you talking like that? Went down to the river to do my wash. You've Got come there. a long way. Water was running red with blood. Mm. Someone might have been Ow. gotten fresh upstream. Perhaps. We should ask Freya to make it so. Okay, now in less grim news, let's talk about our lovely silly goose. I was quite the silly goose. You have doubts? I'll allow myself to combine a couple of things in number 13, because I've made a video about her rare dialogue not too long ago, and you guys have probably seen it, so you do indeed get several unique exchanges with her if you deal with Morkvarg before you ever visit Lofoten together, 
But speaking about Morgvark, here's something you may have missed about him. You remember that you get two choices after lifting the curse. Either you refuse to let him do all the bad things he vows to do and kill him. Sorry, can't let that happen. Then why'd you bloody free me? Or you let him go in exchange for the reward he promised you. If you choose the reward, he'll tell you what to say to a guy in Novigrad and you'll end up with a nice sword. But it turns out, you can simply ask for the reward, learn what you must do to get it, and just kill him afterwards. Fair winds and all, but before you go, my reward? Right. Nearly forgot. Happens often. Too often. Calm yourself. I'm a man of honor. Now listen. You'll go to Novigrad. To the pits. Find the vulture, the moneylander. Tell him Morkvark sends his regards. And you'll know me to be a generous man. Farewell then. The sea beckons. Ah! Getting the best of both worlds, so to speak. Moving on to number 14. Now, I assume everyone who's watching this knows that Ceres and Yalmar aren't the only ones who can end up ruling Skellige. Svanriga is an option as well. But in this point, I'd like to dispel a misconception about what you should do if you want him to be king. Based on what I've seen in my comments, I think a good amount of people believe that you can only get him as king if you simply refuse to do the quests of Ceres and Yalmar and let them fail. Now that works, and that's how I discovered it the first time, but there is another way to do it without skipping their personal quests. The trick is to avoid resolving the Berserker's Dilemma. You know, when the bears attack, you can either side with Yalmar, where you witness their rituals, or you can expose Berna, like I mentioned before, with Ceres. Well, if you don't do any of that, Svanriga will be king in the end. Oh, and another thing I can add here, not really related to Svanriga, but I'll mention it anyway, Madman Lugos' son, Blue Boy Lugos, dies during the Berserker attack. But he has a quest available that can be done if you visit his father's lands before the point in the story where he dies. Just wanted to throw this in here. Alright, the last five points are going to be relatively smaller details, but curious nevertheless, so let's get started. While sailing the seas to the northwest of Hindersfjall at night, a rare sight can be spotted. What appears to be a ghost ship emerges from the water, flies up for a while and then goes back down under the sea. I tried diving after it, but sadly I couldn't see anything further. I did some experiments, but once again, I cannot quite tell how to force it to appear. In fact, based on my previous experience, it might be that the ship appears either once per walkthrough, once per visiting the continent, or simply once in a rather long period of real life time, because sitting there meditating and waiting definitely doesn't help it appear any faster. Right, I'm done with number 15, I'm glad I'm not losing a valuable subscriber over it, and we move on to number 16. While on the topic of the ocean, other than ghost ships, there are also whales. You can actually see them emerging to breathe and then submerge back in. However, if you dive after them, you can see them in all of their glory. They're fully modeled and do swim briefly underwater before they disappear and later respawn. Now, I'll have to give credit to another YouTube channel here as well. What I've said so far, I discovered on my own but he went a step further and actually found their spawn location, or at least one of them. It's right here, and it's a great spot to see them underwater if you haven't yet done so. Right, number 17. In a ruined fort on this island west of Kertrolda, careful not to die here, there is an underground section where a pirate leader is guarding a room. In the room, there's a key. The key unlocks the door to the next room. Well, calling them rooms is probably an understatement, or rather an overstatement. But anyway, um, in there, you can find the corpse of none other than Tyrion Lannister. That was his name, right? I stopped watching Game of Thrones midway through um, season three, I think. I now hear it has a bad ending. Doubt it's worse than Mass Effect 3, but anyway, Geralt even has a brief comment. Sky cells. Nice idea for a prison without bars. Shame he didn't know how to fly. Number 18. 
In this location, west of Firzdal, you can find a cave. In there are three trolls having a rather funny conversation. Mm. Onion rot he must be. <laughs> Omen scared. Plug bunghole with finger. Omen no. Supper no. You can pretty much just kill them. However, their names are no accident. They reference three big YouTubers. Jesse Cox. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Scary Game Squad. Dodger. Welcome to Vlogmas, everybody. So, uh, yeah. And Angry Joe. You done fucked it up. Uh, I know at least one other YouTuber, not as big, but who would still love a reference in the game. Okay, number 19 are uh, the carvings on the land that can be observed from afar. Well, I'm not sure if calling them carvings is exactly right, but you know, they're like the Nazca lines. I've only ever seen two. The first one, and probably the easiest to spot, is located around here. There's a fiery monument, very obvious, from which you can observe it. It's a man hunting animals, I assume. It gets even clearer as you get closer from here, but at a certain point the shapes simply blur into the land. The second one I found is east of Kertrolda around here. You can see it once you climb up. I looked around Reddit and some other forums and apparently there are at least a couple more somewhere in Skellige. Alright, and I suppose I've saved the worst for the end. This is something I thought I knew, but later I did not find. And it's such a shame, because it's one of the first things I wanted to mention when thinking of making this video. I thought I saw this way back on my first or second walkthrough of the game in mid-2015, and I never bothered to check for it again until recently. But it just isn't there now. <laughs> So before the ending in the tent, if you tell Avalach that you need time to prepare before you start, you can explore the place a bit. Here's the thing, I clearly remember seeing a whole bunch of crabs here, right here to the side of the tent. This whole area was littered with small crabs just um, hanging around, moving sideways all over the place. There were like a hundred of them, I, I don't know, um, was this fixed or removed? Or they only appear randomly? Or was I simply imagining things? I mean, at this point I'm beginning to consider that possibility. I tried loading the save several times, and the crabs never appeared. I meditated and waited, and nothing. So, am I going insane from too much Witcher 3? Did I see crabs somewhere else and somehow I thought I saw them here? Or were they really here? I don't know, if anyone remembers seeing them here or any other place in Skellige, please let me know. I suppose some of you might now say that the last one doesn't count, and I wouldn't blame you, so let me give you one more before we're done. On Pharaoh, in the village of Harviken, as my cat jumps around here, I'm sure you remember the quest, The Price of Honor, where the quest giver ends up losing both his brothers and his beloved to unfortunate events. Uh, it's a rather grim quest once again. Skelligan Honor chose to die instead of living with the knowledge they'd let down their brother. But did you know that after you finish it, if you wait a couple of days, you can actually go back to the place where the woman was killed and the quest giver is found there. He has set up a kind of a shrine with flowers and a candle right where her body was and he's just staring at the sky, claiming he has nothing else left to live for. I've nothing left in this life. I've nothing left in this life. I suppose it would have been better to end it on a more cheerful note with Avalach and the crabs, but there we go. 20 details in the lovely land of Skellige. And many more, I'm sure, which I've forgotten to mention or simply do not know of. If you do, however, don't hesitate to share them with us down in the comments. And that was it. Tell me what you thought of all of it, and thank you very much for watching. It was a pleasure making this video, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And as usually, until the next one, stay tuned and be good.